Hi everyone, welcome to the Semaphore Summit. My name is Tommy and in this talk I will show you the process of installing and configuring the open source Semaphore Community Edition. You can find all the commands I use during this talk in docs.semaphoreci.com. Just press the install Semaphore button to get started. Before starting, I would recommend that if you never use Semaphore, give it a try on the semaphoreci.com where you can find the cloud version. You can start a free trial without a credit card and just play around with Semaphore to see if it's a good fit for you and your team. So to install Semaphore, you're going to need two things. First, DNS domain and either an Ubuntu machine or a Kubernetes cluster. The minimum hardware required to run Semaphore is eight CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the first decision is to choose either a single machine or a Kubernetes cluster. Which one is better? Well, it depends. As always, there are trade-offs. For the single machine, the pros are that it's cheaper to run, it's simpler to backup and restore. You can take a snapshot of the machine and it's easier to manage overall because it's a single machine. On the cons, we can say that we have less redundancy because we have only one machine and if it fails, our CI platform goes down and we have less scalability. When I talk about scalability, I'm talking about the control plane, the orchestration, not about the jobs. You can always scale horizontally using more machines, self-hosted agents. What I'm talking here is that the control plane of Semaphore has a limit. You can only scale it vertically with more hardware. On the Kubernetes side, the pros are that we have higher scalability, higher redundancy, and higher availability. These are all the things that Kubernetes brings to the table. On the cons, we have higher costs, we have higher complexity, and it's a little bit more difficult to backup and restore your system. Since the installation process looks the same for our platforms, I will be using a single Ubuntu machine so we can focus on the semaphore installation part. Okay, let's get started. The first thing is to create a virtual machine. We are going to select Ubuntu and preferably an LTS supported machine. Then we're going to pick a machine the correct size. We need 16 gigabytes of RAM and we need eight CPUs. So in this case, this would be the smallest machine that would fit our needs. Let me add my connection keys and let's rename the machine and create the machine. So the first thing to notice is the IP address, we need to copy. This should be a public IP address. We are going to need that for the next step. Now, before continuing, let's talk about domains. Uh, as a general rule, we recommend installing Semaphore on a subdomain. So for example, if your domain is called example.com, the recommendation is to use something like semaphore.example.com. You can use any subdomain. Semaphore is just an example. You can even install Semaphore on your main domain without subdomains and it will work, but it may cause problems if you want uh, to use the same domain for other things such as a website or a mail exchange due to how Semaphore handles certificates and redirection. So in my case, I, my domain is called tomfern.com and I'm going to install Semaphore under semaphore.tomfern.com. Now that we understand we need to install Semaphore under a subdomain, let's create that. We're going to map Semaphore to the IP address. This is the base uh, uh, subdomain. And we're going to create a second record called asterisk.semaphore, also to the same IP address. And this will apply to any names that appear under the semaphore subdomain on my tomfern.com domain. Now let's verify. We need to check 
that the IP is correct and that the wildcard domain also is responding. So anything that we put here resolve to the same IP address of our server. Now we are ready to start the installation step. Let me SSH into the server. First thing is to install, update our packages. And next we are going to install certbot to create our TLS certificates for our domain. Let's create one folder to keep all our configuration. We are going to create a file to contain our configuration options. First thing is to specify the domain. We are going to export a variable called domain uh, with our uh, subdomain. And next, uh, we have IP address. We are going to put our public IP address for the server and source this file. So now we are going to create a TLS certificate and we are going to create that for the wildcard domain, the domain we exported in our uh, environment variable. And this will create a challenge for us. Let's put yes here. And this is a challenge. We need to create this record with the following value. So this is a DNS TXT record. Let's go back to our DNS console. And we're going to create first a TXT record with the uh, challenge and the subdomain. And the content is the one we've been supplied by the third port. And before continuing with uh, the certificate generation, let's test that we have a TXT record. Here it is, and it is correct. So we can go back to third bot and hit continue. It should work now. So if we check into the search slash live and we see our domain, we're going to see all the files. This is uh, the full chain and the private key that we're going to use during the semaphore installation. So we have a HTTPS in our domain. Once we have created the certificates, we can delete the TXT record from our domain. The next step is to install Helm on the server. We have the installation command in the Helm docs. You can also find the same command in our docs. Let's run it here and it should install Helm in our machine. Uh, the next thing is to install K3S. This is uh, basically a mini Kubernetes instance that you can run in a single machine. And once that's installed, we can export kubeconfig to point uh, to the k3s file. And this should allow us to use kubectl normally to see that the cluster is running. We only have one node, but it's enough to run a semaphore in, in single node operation. So before going on, let's run a quick sanity check. First, ensure we have source our config file, that the domain variable is defined, that the IP address variable is defined and is correct. This should be the server address and that the certificate file exists. Both the private and the, the public certificate files should exist. So at this point, we are ready to install some of the dependencies. The first one is to install Emissary, this is a CRD that handles the ingress. And we should wait for the deployment to stabilize before passing to the next step. We can confirm that the deployment is running. We should have a, a few pods running on the emissary system namespace. The final step is to actually install a semaphore. We're going to use Helm. In this case, I have copied our chart here because it's not public. This is a pre-release chart, but by the time you're looking at this, you should be able to do Helm repo add and download the chart from the Helm repository. I'm going to install a semaphore from this local chart. So let's see the command that installs semaphore. It's Helm upgrade. We're going to point the chart. Uh, it should take less than 20 minutes to run and we're going to pass the IP address, the domain, set a few uh, 
ingress variables. And finally, define where are the certificates. Uh, we are going to basically convert the certificates to base 62 and pass them as parameters during the Helm install. Let's run this command. And this should take about 10 minutes to run. So once uh, the installation is done, uh, we are going to head to this site to for our first login. But first, we need to copy and paste this command to obtain our initial credentials. So this will give us our email and password. Let's keep those in a safe place. And we can also run uh, kubectl to get all the deployment. Every service should be ready and available. We are ready for our first login. So let's see here, we are going to pass our uh, root email and password. And this should give us access to the instance. We are going to select semaphore. And this is our welcome page, our dashboard. We have successfully installed Semaphore. Now let's see some of the tasks we should do uh, before we start working with Semaphore. Some of the things we recommend doing. The first thing is to create a user so we don't use the root account for everything. Uh, and to add people, we are going to select here the server menu, go to people and click on add people and this will prompt us with an email and an optional username mm -hmm. and we are going to get a temporary password to log in and once we are done we should see the user here by default new users only have uh, read access to the instance so we're going to make this user the owner to have full privileges um let's go here and log out we're going to log in with the temporary password and we are going to be required to create a new password so let's set a new password here and we should be able to access our semaphore server and again we are logged in but this time we are using our uh, personal account instead of our root account so the next thing we should do in order to make semaphore really useful is to connect a git provider we're going to do that by going to uh, here to the server menu settings then we select git integration and here we have connection to gitlab bitbucket and github let's connect with github we're going to install the GitHub app in our in my organization. And we can select here if we want to give Semaphore access to all repositories only or only a few of the repositories. For example, let me, uh, I have one example here. Let's give access only to this repository and install the application. So what we just did is install the semaphore app, which connects the repositories to the semaphore. Now I can connect my personal account to semaphore so we can access my account from here. And we authorize, this is the last step. And as you can see, if I click on the uh, user menu and select profile settings, now it should appear my photo from GitHub and it should say that GitHub is connected. Now that Semaphore is connected to GitHub, let me try to create a project. Uh, we're going to create new, select GitHub, and it will show me uh, the repository that I allowed the GitHub app to see. Uh, I can rename the project, I don't need to. And this will uh, connect and retrieve all the information from the repository. Let's continue. Here we are going to select which agent is going to run our uh, project. Uh, a default semaphore installation on the community edition includes one uh, agent that runs inside the Kubernetes cluster. Inside, in this case, it's going to run as a pod in our K3S cluster in this machine. In a uh, real Kubernetes cluster is going to run in one of the nodes. 
uh, and this is this comes by default. Uh, we can add more using self-hosted agents to scale up our capacity for running jobs. But let's go with the default, select this and continue. So let's select, uh, for example, this simple Docker uh, workflow just to get started and uh, we can click customize to change the workflow before running. Um, uh, in this case, it's simply running some echo commands. Uh, there's nothing really going on. Uh, let's disable this one. And we don't need these blocks at this point, so we can remove them. That's all right. Mm, we have one job with simply echoes things, but uh, some others testing if the project is running, this is good enough. Let's run, let's boot and start. And this will spin up a new pod where the, the commands in the job will run. If we go, we can open uh, the job and see the output of each of the commands uh, just to validate everything is working. So that's it. We have uh, the community edition installed. We can add more projects. We can edit the workflow. We can uh, we can go to the server settings uh, to create secrets. So we can uh, create some, for example, credentials to access some uh, third-party services. We can set up notifications. We can see what roles are available and permissions. We can set up other integrations and connect with the GitLab or Bitbucket if we are uh, using a different provider. And we can manage our users here by uh, adding our people and changing their, their roles. Finally, would like uh, to give a few comments. This is our uh, walkthrough. You can use our documentation. We have uh, some migration guides and get started guides, or if you prefer, you can go here and follow these steps that will guide you through all the steps required, which is what we just did, connect uh, the repositories, create a project, run a workflow, and we have all these things we can use to learn the different parts of semaphores or there's a lot of things here and concepts uh, if we we're willing to like really dive deep into Semaphore. That's all for today's talk. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed installing Semaphore and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the Semaphore Summit. It's only starting. See you out there.